It usual for people to get lost in Victoria's rugged and remote high country. It is strange for them to remain disappeared. In these past 12 months, four people have disappeared within a 60 km radius, leaving locals and police puzzled. Victoria's country is a place of mystery and beauty that remains unwilling to give up its secrets. It is a region much loved by skiers, hunters, anglers, bushwalkers, campers, and the occasional criminal world looking for a place to hide. When we drive through in heated cars and air conditioned along roads cut through towering trees and bush, it's easy to forget that this terrain can swallow the unfortunate or the unprepared. Some days ago, police launched a search in another area of the state, the Bunyip State Park. The police were looking for signs of Dale Panic. He was a lakes entrance drug seller who went missing 13 months ago. So far, it has been unproductive. In recent years there have been well-equipped bushwalkers, experienced hunters, campers, and day trippers who have disappeared without a trace. With no substantial evidence of what happened, it is natural that rumors fill the void. There have been theories such as a paid hitman following the former governor of Barwon prison, an accidental firing where the victim was buried, and a couple making their own disappearance. And for this reason, the locals in the area take a chance about a regular visitor who disappears into the mountains. He was known as the Button Man. He is a flint-hard bushman who earned this nickname from the habit of using deer horns to make fashion large plugs and buttons for his ear piercings. He made a camp on the side of a mountain that lets him see people approaching. He usually hunts with expertly crafted indigenous style spears and uses snares to catch deer. Many hunters and campers have stories of the button man emerging from the dark and approaching them at camps. He will ask them why they are there but hardly responds to their questions about himself. They say he moved through the hardest terrain with the stamina and competence of someone half his age. At least eight experienced bushmen have had encounters. The bushmen say no one knows he is near till he decides to make himself known. One wildlife photographer spent days taking shots near the button man's camp. When he returned home and tried to download his photos, there was one unsolved shot of the photographer asleep inside his tent. No one knows who took that shot. Bushies who have stoked firewood supplies in hidden gaps have found their stash gone. They say someone must have been following them to know the location. It is entirely possible that people who become disoriented, lost, or unwell can die in the cold of the high country, as their bodies were never recovered. But when the number of cases grew without any apparent reason in a 60 km radius, there will be discussions, even if it is not based on any firm evidence. First, let's have a look at the cases. Carol Clay, 73, and Russell Hill, 74, disappeared on March 20th from their campsite. The campsite was located on Dry River Track in Wanangata. Russell Hill was a former bush logger who knew the Dry River Track area well. Their campsite was burned out, and his equipped camper utility was left abandoned and singed. His drone is still missing. They had a full, happy life in their own homes and showed no sign of disappearing. Checks have shown that they have not accessed their credit cards, phones, or bank accounts. The police believe they are dead, but repeated searches have found no pieces of evidence as to what actually happened. If they hadn't plotted their own disappearance and were the victims of an unusual accident, how did their campsite set up for comfort with a tent, fold-up chairs, outdoor shower, and a table happen to catch fire? What has not been exposed is that Hill was in the same area a week before, flying his drone near the Button Man's campsite. In October last year, Niels Becker, an experienced bushwalker, went missing on a 5-day hike. On October 24th, he left the Upper Jamison hut. Then, 2 days later, he sent a message to his family that he was heading to his car at Mount Sterling. The last confirmed finding was by the Button Man, who told police that he saw the hiker in his area. The track took him past the Button Man's campsite. This is very surprising as his camp was known as the crossroads as it one of a few places with good radio reception. No one knows why Conrad Whitlock drove into the high country. In July last year, he left his white BMW in the dark on the side of Mount Buller Road along with his jacket, keys, and mobile phone. He had been suffering from headaches. If he had a medical episode, he would surely have finished only a few meters from the road. If it were an unusual suicide, then a note for his family would seem possible. One theory is he left his car for a toilet stop and decided he didn't need a jacket for such a quick break. Of all the mysteries, the story of former Barwon Prison Governor David Prido is the greatest. I met Dave many times and found him to be energetic, smart, and committed. What I did not know was that he was a passionate and loving bush hunter. He went hunting on June 5, 2011, with his brother-in-law Mount Sterling from Tomahawk Hut and had not been seen since. There were many theories behind this, including that he was killed for the murder of drug dealer Carl Williams. He was trapped and murdered inside Barwon more than a year ago. 
urban hitmen wouldn't have a chance of sneaking up on an experienced hunter. And most would wear slip-on shoes with no socks that were hardly appropriate gear for the high country. There is another case, not within the defined area, but close enough to be of high interest. Warren Meyer, 57, was disappeared from Dom Saddle in March 2008. For Meyer, an experienced bushwalker, the four-hour hike was easy. The weather was excellent, and he was equipped with a phone, food, water, and GPS, and yet he was never heard again. In these cases, the fact that GPS was not activated, phones not used, and not even the slightest trace left has led to whispered gossip, which is a long way from evidence. These mysteries have led to an in-depth discussion in the Mansfield area, with many campers, hunters, and locals sharing the stories about the chance encounters with the button man. One such story is the experienced shooter who woke around 11 p.m. for a night hunt to find the button man camp next to him. Some think he sees the Mansfield area as a harmless sport to hunt the hunters and tried proving he can approach the best without knowing them. The police from the missing person squad heard these stories too. Search and rescue police walked into a remote area near King Billy Track to corner the button man at his base, which is located on a high point at the Alpine National Park. Eventually, the man who likes his own company was there for a chat. Police went there to seek his help as he knows the area and sometimes sits off hikers, mutely watching them pass. Last week police searched the campsite where Carol Clay and Russell Hill were last seen before the snow. They found nothing. The track may be cold, but soon it will be frozen. Meanwhile, there are infrequent sightings of the button man, wandering in the bush or Mansfield to buy supplies. He is a unique character who is resourceful, slightly selfish of the area, and usually only seen when he wants to be seen. But that wouldn't stop others from wondering. What do you think is happening in the high country? What happened to these people? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next week.